good morning, everyone. I have a special guest here today to answer a bunch of questions uh, pertaining to downsizing and making that big move. I have Joel Olson here. And Joel is going to take a few of my questions, and he is with Canadian Mortgage Experts, and yeah. he helps my clients all across Canada, in BC, Alberta, Ontario, wherever. And uh, making that, I've got a lot of clients who, who are deciding to move to the West Coast, get their luxury West Coast dream home. So we're going to ask him a few questions, and if you do need to reach out to him, uh, joelolson.ca is his website. And his direct line is 1-250-814-1627. Remember, I'm Jean, the Victoria homeowner. So Joel, good morning, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to say, just in case you're watching this some point in time, that, you know, this isn't evergreen. So uh, if you do get some information, best thing to do is to, to reach out to me, Jean, with Victoria homeowner, or Joel. But today we're talking about people who are making the big move, maybe from the lower mainland, from Alberta, even Ontario, and they're, um, they're, they, they've got a, a big asset, they've got a home that, you know, it's the market we know is hot, and they, they you know, they have a, you know, a home that they've paid off, and they're ready to downsize or ready to move out of the snow, which tends to be the big thing, um, over to the southern Vancouver Island, where I work, Victoria, Duncan, Shimanus, the Cowichan Valley, lots of lots of inquiries there, um, or they've already sold their homes. So, Joel, why don't you tell us about what the options are? If people want to get shopping, yeah, uh, and they haven't sold their home. What 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 bridge financing exists, or what can what how can you help them? Yeah, well, I think the first thing to be really aware of is that like if you're not uh, if you don't do this preemptively, it's going to cost you a lot more money. And so you'll see that because I'll go through a different, a few different options. So if I have a home that's free and clear, and I'm thinking that um, I'm going to buy before I have that home sold, or I'm going to have to buy and close it. So for example, I'm buying a home and my home is sold and the title transfer is on June the 1st, but I bought a new home and that title transfer is on May the 15th. So I won't have the money um, on the closing date. So I'm gonna need some type of bridge finance. There's a, there's a wide array of options that are gonna exist um, based on that. Now, the easiest way uh, that people are uh, to do this would be prior to ever uh, selling your house, uh, prior to ever um, uh, you know, listing your house on the market would be for us to go and put a line of credit on your existing home, which gives you access to the equity uh, until it's sold. Now, of course, the moment the house is sold, they're gonna pay the line of credit off in full. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that once your house is listed for sale, lenders don't typically like to finance it. They believe that's going to make them less money because you're going to pay the mortgage, you know, hopefully in a pretty uh, imminent fashion. So your best option, first off, is before you ever list your home, before you start looking, let's put a line of credit on. It gives you access to that equity so you can put a down payment down. Um, now, there's, there could be a lot of things that happen with that based on your situation. Maybe you can we can use a line of credit to buy that home for cash. Maybe we can use a line of credit to put um, a pretty meaningful down payment. Lots of options about exist. So that'd be the first thing we do. Now, if you sell your home, uh, if you find a new house to buy and you buy and you haven't sold your home, there's not an offer that's firm. And what I mean by that, there's not an offer that has an actual closing date and subjects have all been removed. There's nothing impending it except for you're just waiting for it to close. There is a way to get a bridge finance for that. A bridge finance for that looks somewhere around. Uh, every bank is a little bit different, but you can have... Um, uh, around prime plus five with a, a $500 fee. So it could cost you a couple thousand dollars to do a bridge. So um, even if it's only a couple of weeks, you need the, you need the money on it. So that is, that is the, that is a, a way we could do it. If you already have a firm sale. Now, if you have to have your house and your house is not sold, or maybe just has an offer on it and it's not completely done and you mm -hmm. buy another home, then there is bridge options still available but that can cost you about 4% of whatever um, you're buying. So if I'm buying a home for $500,000, it's probably gonna cost me $20,000 in bridge fees. Now that still could be an option that is viable in some situations, but it's important to know that the, these are all things that happen as a result of not preemptively kind of um, setting things in motion, right? So, um, but every situation is different. Sometimes we can look at a lot of different things, depending on what your exposition is, how much cash you're going to put in, where you're going to end up. So, you know, it just, you know, a lot of people end up paying a lot of these fees and a lot of expensive bridges because they just don't plan them. You know, they say something like, you know, I'm going to sell when I find something to buy, 
great. If I don't, um, I'm not going to do everything till then, not realizing the market's quite quick and people buy your home quite fast. And the homes you want to buy, it's, it's, we're always in a situation where people have a crunch, where they're, they've sold their home, they can't find something to buy, and mm-hmm. now they're, they're really in a tough space. And, and that happens uh, you know, the vast majority of the time because uh, the same reason why your house sells quick is the same reason why you, don't have, you can't find something that quick to buy because there's not a lot of inventory. Right, right. No, that's helpful. And so if people have more questions, because you, you're absolutely right, everyone situation is unique and i know that there are certainly some chatter as rates are ticking up a little bit we're in we're in kind of mid-march right now 2022 um you know i i don't see the inventory challenge being fixed overnight it takes a long time to build homes yeah um so you know do you have any insight into what rates are going to do do you have big concerns should people make their move if they're going to do it yeah. sooner rather than later because there's now the cooling off period there's a lot of things in flux yeah i think i mean i think that um <clears throat> you're absolutely right it's what what we think on the mortgage side of things uh there's the big thing right now is that there is a ton of unknowns um you know we tell clients every day you know if we uh, there's a lot of our clients that we're pre-approving that are good clients that you know, could buy a home, young families, money, but are constantly being outbid by a cash offer or people that are, you know, have the ability to go in with a much stronger offer, maybe, you know, in most areas without conditions. If we add that cooling off period, you know, you know, easily these days, we sit on more and more pre-approvals than ever. You know, we're, you know, we really are introduced. It's not just the cool, the cooling off period, in my opinion, will introduce um, a meaningful amount of buyers to the market that are currently on the sidelines. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So um, that's going to be a big deal. Um, you know, there's no question about that, um, that that's going to make that's going to make a difference as well. Right. So um, so that's that's something to keep in mind. Um, but we there's there's all these unknowns like what's you know, as we talk about rates, you know, rates. I'm actually not of the opinion that rates are going to go up you know, aggressively. I think they're going to go up one more time. And when we're talking about rates go up I mean, we do a lot of you know, commentary and videos on this. When we talk about rates going up, you know, we're talking about most of the time we're talking about a variable rate go, or the bank account overnight rate going up affecting variables. And so perception is reality because people think rates are going to go up. You know, they will, they will plan accordingly and they will buy, um, you know, they will probably, you know, buy anticip- in anticipation of rates going up. I don't think that, um, I don't think rates will go up aggressively on the fixed side either, but we, most of our clients, do do use variables but again you know there there is just so many unknowns and you know like uh, i think back to great examples when when we first looked at march 2020 and the market grinded to a halt the vast majority of our predictions were that people would um that that the market was already getting busy and inventory would be pushed to the fall and people didn't really think that was going to happen because the market seemed to have slowed but that's exactly what happened the push to the fall all the things that were there and another thing that we see on our side that may be a very interesting thing for people to be aware of is that um i I don't see this a lot in the media, but we see a lot of people, I call it house hoarding. And so, you know, when you think about inventory problems, you know, someone might say, okay, I have a house. I'm going to, when I move, I'm going to sell that house. A lot of people are holding on to those houses and not necessarily even renting them out anymore. I just had three conversations this morning with clients that are buying a second home and they will not be using them as long-term rentals. You know, a little bit of a fear about, you know, whether or not the government will put in, you know, some type of rules around having long-term tenants and without put them in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. So inventory, there's some inventory crunches that I think are not yet fully realized. Um, And to add to that, you know, the story for many years was that inventory is a result of us having too many, um, too much immigration and people coming in and buying those houses. Well, what better proof the last two years when we're not letting anyone into the country Mm -hmm. that, um, that immigration is, is not driving that. But, you know, if it truly, if it truly does have a factor, which I do believe, you know, that's an inventory challenge that has yet to be fully realized in this market too, right? So. Wow. Well, very informative. And and you mentioned that you have a lot of videos. Is there a YouTube channel? Is it just Joel? I do. So we have a YouTube channel, our Joel's Mortgage Team YouTube channel. We run an actual, on rates, we do a variable rate update every single week because it's such a volatile situation. But when you think about selling properties right now, this is very important as we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. If you are into a fixed rate, um, you could have, uh, that penalty is five times greater than a variable. So, you know, Mm -hmm. if somebody go, like we were talking a little bit offline about the idea, you look at your tax assessment, you think you got $2 million in the bank. Well, do you really, once you're taking off, 
you know, taxes and realtor fees, right. but even right. mortgage penalties. We could be, you could be looking at a $50,000 penalty that, um, and these, these are not uh, fixed amounts with a fixed rate mortgage. You know, we've had people have penalties of $3,000 turned to $20,000 in a week because it's influenced by the stock market. And if you're paying attention at all to stocks and bonds, you'll know that those are there. There's an extreme amount of volatility in those right now that, mm -hmm. you know, obviously is creating those types of effects. So, you know, like just kind of planning to sell your home on the idea that, oh, I'm going to net this amount of money. That, that truly may not be the case. You may be netting a lot less than you think you are. Right. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, it's Jean with Victoria Homeowner. You can find me at www.victoriahomeowner.com or direct 250-858-7716. I want to thank Joel for coming on today and giving yeah, us his you. insights. His website again is uh, www.joelolson.ca and that's O-L-S-O-N, Olson. And his uh, direct line is 1250-814-1627. I feel like we're going to do this again, Joel, and I want to thank you so much for uh, spending a couple minutes with me today. Terrific. Thank you so much.